Today we're looking at seven of Illustrator's tools and features that you might not know, but that will save you time and will make your life considerably easier. This video is also sponsored by Squarespace, which is an awesome website building platform, and we'll come back to them a bit later in the video. So you can see I'm in Illustrator and I have a line. This can be any line that you've drawn with any tool. And what I'm gonna do first of all, is I'm gonna go and add an arrowhead to this. Let's make this interesting. Here we go, very nice. And then if we go over here, you can see we have the width tool. Don't worry, we will be coming back to that one. And I can select the warp tool. And what I can do is hold down Alt or Option, you see this icon, and I can click and drag. This does skew this out of shape, which uh, might be what you want. But if you wanna keep it a perfect circle, hold down Shift as well. And we can quickly and easily resize this brush. And what I can do here, let's make it a bit bigger. Whoop, there we go, is just go down and up and I can use this to quite literally warp and distort shapes which is an alternative way of creating lovely curves rather than using the pencil tool or the pen tool and a bonus tip if you want especially smooth curves go to object down to path and select smooth and then slowly crank up the slider for an even smoother curve. There we go, lovely. Okay, next up we have the width tool. So you can see I have a collection of lines and shapes. We've got our arrow from before, a spiral and an arc. And what I can do is, well, let's select the arrow first and then go back over here to where the warp tool was and grabbed the width tool. The shortcut for that is Shift and W on the keyboard. And what this enables us to do is click along any point on a path and click and drag to make this thicker or thinner. So we could thicken this up here and we could well, we could change the end and make the arrow thicker like so or we could bring that into a tapered point. And this is a great way to control the thickness of a stroke at different points. So we could go back over here, maybe make that a bit bigger. And something we can also do is hold down Alt or Option and then click and drag to only change one side. As you can see, that looks awful. Uh, so let's undo that. And if we look at it in action on these two examples here, what we can do is we could make this a bit wider here and then make this inner part a bit thinner. And the same with this, what we could do is for the arc, we could go and add, where are you? No, not there, that same arrowhead, Shift and W, and then make it thinner this end. No damn thicker. And in fact, we could even round off the stroke Let's round off that cap. And on that end there, we have a nice rounded tapered point. Right, next up we have the rotate tool. Now this might sound like a very simple tool. Yes, you can use it to rotate things. But if you have something like a snowflake, for example, what you can actually do is just create one piece of the snowflake, as you can see here. And if we go and grab the rotate tool, the shortcut for that is R on the keyboard. What we can do is, well, first we will need to select this one piece of snowflake, then press R, and I'm gonna click on this bottom point here, hold down Alt or Option and click. And this will bring up this window. Let's move it out the way. And I want to rotate this six times around that central point. So I'm gonna type 360, that's 360 degrees, divided by six and then press Tab and you'll see the rotation. But do not click OK because it will just move the existing shape. What we need to do is select copy. And if we press command or control D, we can repeat that transform action all the way around. And you can see we now have six pieces of snowflake all perfectly spaced apart. Now, before we move on, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, which is a platform that's perfect for creatives, entrepreneurs, and business owners, because Squarespace has all the tools you'll need in one place. And it's super easy to set up a great looking site where you can sell physical or digital products from an online store, and you can easily take payments with things like Apple Pay and PayPal too. There's also a ton of website templates that are fully responsive, so you don't have to worry about whether or not it's gonna work on mobile. And one of my favorite features is Squarespace Blueprint with built-in SEO tools. And this is like a guided design system that enables you to create a professional looking site that is completely unique and built from scratch. And it's also optimized for SEO. So if you're interested, check out squarespace.com to get started with a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Dansky to save 10% off your first website or domain. Right, this next one is super simple and super useful. So you can see I have a circle here. This can be any shape you like. 
If you click and hold on the eraser tool, you'll see the knife tool and you can click and drag and it will kind of try and draw a smooth curve and this will quite literally slice this shape into two pieces. But of course that is awful. So let's undo it and go back, grab the tool. What we can do is hold down Alt or Option and we can click and drag to slice in a straight line. So we'll slice a bit off there. We'll slice a bit off here as well. And if you want to slice perfectly horizontally or perfectly vertically, that's easy too. Just hold down Alt or Option and Shift and we can slice horizontally. Yeah, let's slice it vertically as well. Shwing, there we go. Deselect everything. And now we can basically uh, pull this apart. So that is a really quick and easy way to slice up one shape into lots of little shapes. Look at that, look at that uh, marvelous design there. Very good, Dan, very good. Right, so this next one uses a tool that I have rarely used, if ever, and that is the measure tool. So if I go over here to the eyedropper tool, click and hold and select measure tool. It's basically a, a ruler. What I can do is go into outline mode with command or control Y. And as you can see, I've got this line, but I've already created the line and I don't know what the angle is. And even if I select it, up here it says zero, so there's no way of finding out the angle and I might want to create a line that runs parallel. This is something that I've tried to do many times in the streams, you may have seen it, and uh, it's quite difficult, but this tool it can be very useful. So if I click on this end and drag along the line, now if I drag nice and slow, you'll see it will snap to that line there. And if I let go, this tells me that this line is 27.29 degrees. So to check that, Let's create a horizontal line, press R for the rotate tool, return, type in 27.29 and press OK. And there we go. Put those together. We have a line at exactly the same angle. Now again, this next one is a tool that I use very rarely, but if you do need to do this with it, it can be very useful. So I've got my snowflake we created earlier. Let's go and expand that first of all. And then press Command or Control G to group everything together. I might make it a bit smaller as well. Let's shrink it down and yeah, let's just pop it over there. Lovely. Now what I'm going to do is open up the symbols panel, wherever you're hiding. Where are you? There you are, you cheeky sausage. I found you. Let's move you over there. And symbols are great because what I can do is drag this in, give it a name, sh -la 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 -la. And this is now a symbol. So what I can do is basically create multiple instances of this by dragging, holding, alt or option. And if I change one instance, let's just go, there we go, double click to come out. You can see every instance gets updated. However, when working with symbols, we can actually use something called the symbol sprayer tool. So if we deselect that, we've got the spray can over here, lots of other options underneath, which we'll come back to in a minute. Now we can double click the tool and we get access to a bunch of options like the diameter, which is the size, the intensity. So let's just drop that down and it will spray a bit slower. And you've got settings for all the other ones here as well. As you can see, some have more than others. But what we're going to do is just first, we're going to make sure we have the snowflake selected and we're just going to, we're going to spray that in a little bit. There we go. Now if we click and hold again, some of these are definitely more useful than others. So I'm going to go with the sizer tool. And if I click and hold, you can see it gets bigger. And if I hold down alter option and click, it gets smaller. And it does work quite quickly as well. So you've got to be careful. Whoop. So we'll make these smaller. So we're just going to create a little bit of randomness. So if you've got something like snowflakes or a pattern that you're repeating, you can very quickly and easily adjust the size here. We could try the spinner. So I could kind of just use this to rotate everything. So if you are creating a pattern, this can be especially useful. But where this really shines is this is all still a symbol. So this here is still a symbol set that I can double click to go inside and I can edit, but, 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 but. If I go and change the original symbol by double clicking to go inside, what I can do is I could, well, let's go and change the color first. We'll go for white. In fact, you can change any properties on this. You could change the shape. You can edit the graphic, whatever changes you like. You can see here, I'm still inside the <laughs> symbol. <laughs> Great naming, Dan, love it. And if I click to come out, all of those changes then get updated across every instance of that symbol. Right, so for this last one, I have a blank artboard, but if I zoom all the way out, you can see my artboards are 
all over the place. And this is very common when working within Illustrator. And I can select the artboard tool. And then over here on the right hand side, you can see I have some options or I can go to window and down to artboards. This will bring up the panel, which is much easier to manage your artboards. But there is this option here. If we click this, we can rearrange those artboards. So let's move it down there. And we can have these going in a straight horizontal or vertical line, or we can have these going left to right. So I can click on this. I can choose the number of columns. Let's go for two columns. And I'd like the spacing between each artboard to be 200 pixels. And with this checked, all of the artwork that is on these artboards currently, that is going to move with them. And if I click OK, voila, all of my artboards are now automatically resized. Now, if something like this happens and this blue gets left behind, as you can see, this is a locked object. So if you are going to use this feature, just make sure you go to object and unlock all before you do it. Otherwise, any locked elements like that, they won't get moved. There we go. Let's just let's just put that one back there. So that's the video. And again, a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And of course, to you for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.